Psalms 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evil doers assail me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I asked of the Lord that will I seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me on, set me high on a rock. Now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says, seek his face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You who have been my help, do not cast me off. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. If my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Do not give me up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and they are breathing out violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Our second reading is from Luke 13, 31 through 35. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to him, get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, go and tell that box for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow. And on the third day, I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day, I must be on my way because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those that are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you. And I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our strength and our redeemer. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I feel, oh, I feel a little bit like Jesus has been out in the wilderness or out in the farm field when we hear this, the farm, farmyard, when you hear this passage, because he's, he's talking about animals, right? He calls Herod a fox. And he talks about gathering in the people of Jerusalem like a hen draws in her chicks. It's an interesting passage because what we have here is, is Jesus being told that the son of the last guy who wanted to kill him still wants to kill him, right? Here, here's a situation where, where Jesus knows what Herods tend to do, right? Herods haven't been the best. We, we mentioned, we've mentioned this before. Herods haven't been the best to one another in their own family, much less the people they rule. And we are in the middle of a situation here. 
clearly Jesus has been making some waves and those waves are being felt all the way to Jerusalem. They're being felt in the, the highest places of power. They're also being felt, felt in the, 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 the Pharisees' places of power, right? Because the Pharisees are like, you're making waves. We don't want Herod to notice us at all. <laughs> Stop it, right? Or we're going to turn you over so that, you know, we don't get any of this flack, right? Who knows? Who knows exactly what they're thinking, right? And then Jesus says in this passage that he, he has some work to do today, tomorrow, and the third day, right? Which we are, we, we are highly attuned to hear, right? We hear the echoes that Easter is coming, that there's, that there's something to be said for what will come next. But I imagine that those who saw this situation, who saw this, this interaction, were most hmm, shocked isn't quite the right word, but aware, right? Aware that Jesus was talking about all these other people who have come to do what he was doing and how that ended up for them. Because when Jesus says that it's, it's just impossible for a, for a prophet not to be killed anywhere, to be, to be killed anywhere but Jerusalem, he's saying, you are the people who are supposed to hear this. <laughs> These are the people who are missing the point the most. These are the most disobedient of little kids. And yet, and yet Jesus says, my response, my, my, my heart felt want, desire for, for these people, for this place, for this dwelling is to gather them in like a hen gathers for chicks. I don't know about you, but every, I don't know, couple of weeks, a picture pops up on my social media picture somewhere of a, of a, of a, of a hen. And, and there's either puppies or ducklings or kittens or who knows what else, right? Huddled under her wing. If you have not seen those pictures, go look them up. They're really cute, right? That's why they get posted, right? But I also want you from this point on, whenever you see one of those pictures, to be reminded of this passage. To be reminded that Jesus is saying, I love you and I don't care if that way leads to death. I don't care if that way leads to my own pain. I love you unconditionally. And I, with all of my being wish, Jesus says, that I could pull you in and, and keep you safe from all that you would do, from all the mistakes you would make from all the ways you would want to be in the world. Because the, the further picture or, or, or reality of those pictures of the hens with the, the things that are not, duck, uh, that are not um, chickens under her wings is that there's a, there's a point at which there's a problem, right? Because that mother hen really wants to keep everybody safe and, and gathered in, right? But if you've ever lived on a farm, I hear that the, when those, those ducklings that the, 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 the hen has taken over, when the ducklings start wanting to get in the water or when they do get in the water, the mother hen freaks out, right? She cares so much about them that, that she can't see who they're supposed to be, right? 
and 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 then and the same happens with those dogs and those cats right this is a powerful image right and like met, most metaphors it breaks down right like jesus doesn't want us to like not be who we are right but that image of wanting to care and caring for us in all of our uniqueness and of all of our all of who we are that we might be gathered in too right with with people we don't look like and and people we don't think like and people who are just different from us and yet what jesus says is even jerusalem i want to gather this way even this place that has had all the opportunities to figure it out. In essence, he's saying, even us who've had all the opportunities to figure out, we are loved and be loved. Our Psalm this morning, Psalm 27, it talks about living with God, living in God's house, right? It starts out with that image. And I think, I think when we see that, we, we think about the far off and, and not now, right? Like some, some far off future of, of, of when we, we die and get to go to heaven, right? But I think if we could talk to the psalmist, to the person who wrote this psalm, they weren't talking necessarily exclusively about that experience. What they were talking about was, was, was was the, the idea of dwelling or living not in a, in, a, in a place, like a physical place, like your address that's searchable on Google Maps, right? But, but that, he, that, the, that the psalmist is talking about dwelling as, as, as existing, living as existing or being present with God. The desire to exist in the presence of God, the desire to experience that in gathering that Jesus is talking about, the, 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 to live with God in God's presence, to practice the presence of God. Can I say presence enough? Can I point out that what we're talking about here is those the, to, to be aware and alive to the ways that we are gathered in and poured over and poured through and poured out to one another. No matter where we are, whether we live in Jerusalem proper or we live in Reno or we live somewhere nearby. That, that we live, that, that, that God asks all that God wants from us is to be aware and alive and alert and react to that dwelling place. To say, I am a child of God, I am loved and beloved, and each and every person I meet is a loved and beloved child of God who is brought under God's wings, brought into that sense of care. My final quote is from the late poet Maya Angelou. And it comes from a, an interview she did with Oprah on Super Soul Sunday, if you've ever watched that. And it's this image, it, it, to set you the scene, it's, it's Oprah, Winfrey and, and Maya Angelou sitting, talking to one another. And, and Maya Angelou tells the story of saying that God loves me to a, to a mentor. And the mentor saying, say it again, say it again, until she says it in a way where you understand even just, even in her telling of the story that she understands that God loves her, even her. And what she says is this. She marvels and says, it still humbles me that this force, which made leaves and fleas, she's, I love her, 
and stars and rivers and you loves me. And you could tell that this had been something that, that she, had, she had, had formed her life. She said, she, one of the comments she made is that I could do anything good because God loves me. I can do it all. I am who I am. And God loves me. So this morning and this week and, and in the, the days and hours of, of this, be reminded. Even if you have to or, or you need to or you just want to remind yourself, say it to yourself in the mirror. God loves me. God loves each of you. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Amen.